In this programme, we will explore some aspects of the vast and busy railway network of the Midlands in the 1950s and 60s. The area covered in our films runs from Crewe in the north to Wolverton and Banbury in the south, though much of the programme is centred on the county of Staffordshire. In sequences which cover subjects ranging from mainline expresses through and to branch lines serving obscure collieries, our aim is to convey a flavour of an era of recent railway history which has now gone forever. We begin at Crewe South. A Patriot Class 460 speeds through on an up express. The next working along the upfast line is hauled by another member of this class. Black 5460 heads four crew along the down fast. In this sequence, filmed by Tim Shuttleworth in 1958, the earlier British Railways carriage livery, jokingly referred to as blood and custard, was being supplanted by the maroon livery, which was almost to see out the age of steam. Crab 260 number 42812, an LMS design dating from 1926, arrives in the sidings at Crew South with a goods. Crew station on the 1st of April 1962. Royal Scott class number 46107, Argyle and Sutherland Highlander, moves off towards the shed, having arrived with a train bound for Birmingham, which had originated in Edinburgh and Glasgow. Ginty number 47384 was the pilot at the south end of the station that day. The train from Scotland continues its journey to Birmingham behind diesel power. One of the Stanier designed taper boilered two cylinder 264 tanks, number 42493, a type first introduced in 1935, was also busy at the south end of the station moving stock for a Shrewsbury train into one of the bay platforms and taking vehicles off the rear of a London to Blackpool service. Crab 42933 drifting through the station light engine passes under the wires already up at Crewe. Steam was under a dual threat from both electrification and the diesels. A sign of the times is the sight of the Royal Scot, leaving Crewe hauled by D316. Away from the glamour of name trains on the main lines, it should be remembered that in this era the railway still carried an enormous amount of freight traffic. A BR standard class 4, 460 at Newcastle Junction north of Stoke Station begins our coverage of this important part of the railway's activity. A diesel unit on a service from Stoke to Crewe is checked by signals as a very clean, probably X-Works 8F shunts in the sidings at Newcastle Junction. Uh -huh. 
much more typical of the external condition of steam locomotives by this time, March 1965, is that of this grimy black five heading towards Stoke. A bit further north of the last location was Chatterley Sidings near Kidsgrove. In the 60s, much of British heavy industry still relied on coal and a good deal of the nation's electricity was supplied from coal-fired power stations. The numerous pits in Staffordshire brought much traffic onto the railway. A train of empty coal wagons arrives from the north. How the mighty have fallen. The motive power is number 70034 Thomas Hardy, one of the Britannia Pacifics, the first of British Railway's new standard designs introduced in 1951. In filthy condition, the Britannia deposits its wagons in the sidings and then heads off light engine towards Stoke. On the same line at Etruria, youthful train spotters cop Jubilee number 45625 Sarawak as it hurries a goods towards Stoke. 264 tank number 42323 passes bunker first in the direction of Crewe. Etruria was the junction for the Potteries Loop Line, which diverges to the right beyond 4F060 number 44395, which is setting its train back into the sidings at the junction. Parcels train, consisting of a single van, comes off the loop line, hauled by Fowler Design 264 tank number 42378. Stanya Mogul 42952 leaves the sidings and heads off towards Stoke. On the nearby Apedale branch, typical of the many freight lines in this part of Staffordshire, Crab 260 number 42782 is seen at work on a train of coal wagons. At the rear, a venerable brake van of Midland origin brings up the end of the formation. Jinty 060 tank number 47596 is working hard on a heavy coal train on the Chesterton branch, which joined the Stoke to Crewe line at Chatterley Sidings, which we visited earlier. A standard LMS brake van is at the rear of this train. These scenes were recorded by Tim Shuttleworth in May 1961. At Pinox Junction, 4F number 44074 drops a rake of empty wagons off into the sidings.
These would be used to transport coal mined at the nearby Chatterley Whitfield Colliery. Not all of North Staffordshire was dominated by coal mines and heavy industry, as our next sequence, filmed at Alton Tower Station on the delightful Churnet Valley Line, will demonstrate. On the 24th of April 1958, a passenger train from Leek to Utoxeter arrives at Alton Towers. The locomotive is 264 tank number 42369. Later the same day, a northbound service is hauled by Stanya Design two-cylinder 264 tank 42582. This view of a passenger train out on the line, hauled by another 264 tank, was recorded between Alton Towers and the next station to the north, Oakamore. This is Norton Bridge Junction where the line to Stoke diverged from the Stafford to Crewe line. On Sunday the 1st of April 1956, 264 tank 42360 brings a Stoke to Birmingham stopping passenger service off the Stoke line. Rebuilt Patriot number 45532 Illustrious speeds through on the main line with a down express. We are now heading towards the southern part of Staffordshire with these scenes at Rugeley on the Trent Valley main line. A Black 5 makes light work of an up-stopping train. An unidentified Stanya mogul hauls a freight in the other direction. We encounter the work of our second filmmaker, Roger Shenton, for the first time, with this view of a short parcels train hauled by a Black Five at Litchfield Trent Valley High Level. Roger worked for British Railways in this part of Staffordshire and he recorded these images of freight trains hard at work on the South Staffs line between Litchfield and Walsall. A dirty black five hauls along goods past Fossway level crossing between Litchfield and Brown Hills. An 8F280 approaches Anglesey siding signal box with another goods train. As the locomotive gets closer, the exhaust from the chimney changes colour. If you look closely as the engine passes the camera, you can see the fireman hard at work in the cab, shoveling coal from the tender into the firebox. Down the line at Fossway level crossing, one of the Ivert Design 260s, which were known colloquially as the Flying Pigs, passes on another freight, probably bound for Bescot. 
On a very windy day, with the spires of Litchfield Cathedral visible in the background, a Black Five ambles by with a coal train from Witchnor Junction to Norton Junction near Walsall. The South Staffs line is now closed as a through route, though this part of the line between Litchfield City and the outskirts of Brown Hills is still open to serve an oil depot. The spire of Hammerwich Church beyond the embankment marks this spot as being very close to where the line terminates today. Our final scenes on this part of the South Staffs line feature an austerity 280 heading towards Litchfield. as well as one of the small batch of Black Fives built in 1947 and 1948, which had roller bearings and double chimneys. This one is climbing in the direction of Walsall. Just north of Walsall Station, a BR Standard Class 5 460 is banked by an 8F up the gradient from Rycroft Junction to Litchfield Road Junction on a mixed freight. The long procession of slow freights that plodded daily along the South Staffs line and through Walsall were mostly hauled by relatively modern steam locomotives, former LMS designs like the 8Fs and the Black Fives, and some of the British Railway's standard types dating from the early 1950s. However, locomotives from earlier periods were still around right up into the 1960s, and in the next part of this programme, we will track down some of these veterans. Passing through Saltley Station on a dismal April day in 1962 was 3F060 number 43620, a survivor of a large class of locomotives designed by Johnson and first introduced in 1885 on the Midland Railway. The LMS developed the 4F060 from the earlier Midland design and built large numbers of them from 1924 onwards. One of these drifts through Saltley Station.
Later, 4F, number 44137, on a goods, is passed by 3F, 43620, running light engine, providing a useful comparison between the two designs. Before the arrival of the 8Fs and Black 5s in large numbers, much of the longer distance goods traffic on the LMS was handled by a variety of 080 tender locomotives, whose antecedents dated back to the pre-grouping companies. After grouping, the LMS locomotive department was dominated by the influence of Derby Works and the ethos of the former Midland Railway. As a consequence of this, a large number of the locomotives built by the London and North Western Railway had relatively short lives after grouping. The one distinctly northwestern type to survive in any numbers into our period was the 7F080. Four nine four three zero was a member of a class introduced by the London and North Western in 1921. Two generations of heavy goods locomotives, a 7F080 and an 8F280, double head a freight out of the Midland Yard at Walsall. Emitting much smoke, a pair of 7Fs power a freight from Water Orton to Wensfield past Walsall No. 2 signal box. Other locos glimpsed in this sequence are an Ivert Mogul and a former LNER B1 460 on another freight. 49430 is seen again on the up slow line at Walsall, passing the district engineer's yard, where Roger Shenton was based at this time. These surviving 080s were developments of a London Northwestern design which dated back to 1912. On the 6th of February 1962, Tim Shuttleworth recorded the same loco, this time hauling a trip working from the former Midland Yard at Wensfield to Wolverhampton. These 7Fs had driving wheels of 4 foot 5 and a half inches in diameter and weighed 62 tonnes. Most of the locomotives had tender cabs, which made life easier for the crew when they were running tender first.
Later, this same train steams away from Bushbury sidings on the old Grand Junction line, which avoided Wolverhampton station. Four eight eight nine five caught shunting at the Midland Yard in Wolverhampton was one of the first bats introduced from 1936 onwards by the LMS, whose initials can clearly be seen on the loco's tender. Some 14 years after that company had become part of the nationalised British Railways. This same loco is seen later, just north of Wolverhampton High Level Station on the main Stour Valley line, with a mixed goods train heading for Bushbury. A few years earlier, on the 13th of June 1956, number 49158, another of the LMS built locos, passes on a coal train near Pelsall. Looking clean and well cared for, this engine was allocated to Stafford Shed at this time. The employment of seven Fs on a train of passenger stock was most unusual. 49066 brings a 12-coach empty stock working through Norton Junction in June 1956. In February 1964, 49407, one of the early locos from the first batch built by the LNWR, is at work at the Midland Yard in Wolverhampton. The distinctive Midland signal box which control the site can be seen in the background. The same loco later worked a trip freight to the Midland Yard at Willen Hall. Tim Shuttleworth recorded 49407 shunting at Willen Hall. Many steam locomotives had by this time acquired the distinctive yellow warning stripe across the cab, which signified that they were not permitted to work over the electrified London Midland main line into Euston. This latest addition adorns number 49407 as she wheezes around the yard with steam oozing from all the wrong places. The end was nigh for the class, and a valedictory rail tour was organised by the Stevenson Locomotive Society on lines around Birmingham on the 12th of December 1964. By a happy coincidence, Roger Shenton filmed the train from the line side, whilst Tim Shuttleworth travelled on the special, which is first seen near Harborne Junction on the Stour Valley main line. 
The locos hauling the train were numbers 49361 and 49340. The train leaves the Stour Valley line at Soho East Junction and travels along the Soho line. This is the splendidly named Soho Soap Works Signal Box. Our final view of the special was taken when the two 7Fs paused at Wensbury Town Station. These were changing times on the London Midland region. Electrification was proceeding apace and there was no place for the old 080s on the new railway. A 9F hauls a 264 tank and an 080 bereft of its chimney away from Walsall on their final journey to the scrapyard. Some years earlier, Tim Shuttleworth had filmed some even more venerable London and North Western survivors at Wolverton Works. Shunting duties were performed by the only remaining members of a class which dated back to the 1870s. Between 1870 and 1880, a total of 258 of these special tanks were built. There were still 243 in service when the LMS was formed in 1923. The construction of hundreds of jinties, a type we have seen earlier in this programme, in the 20s and 30s, led to the wholesale withdrawal of these L&WR engines, to the extent that there were only six in service when British Railways was formed in 1948. CD3 is the loco seen in steam, shunting at Wolverton in April 1956. Incidentally, several of these machines were built to a gauge of 5 foot 3 inches for use on a subsidiary of the LNWR in Ireland. Rare colour footage of these and LNWR six-wheel carriages, still in LNWR livery in the 1950s, is published in Volume 5 of our Irish Railways video series, Irish Railways in the 1940s and 50s. CD3, the letters stand for Carriage Department, hauled her sisters out of the shed for the benefit of the camera. The other locos seen here are CD6 and CD8. We now move to Whitchurch in Shropshire on the Shrewsbury to Crewe line, 
where the first train observed is an inspection saloon hauled by a BR Standard Class 4 460, number 75053. We have not so far mentioned that other major player in the railway history of the region, the Great Western. Our first Western locomotive in this programme is number 7821 Ditcheat Manor, shunting at the station. The crew to Shrewsbury line had been owned by the LNWR. A Liverpool to Cardiff Express hurries through Whitchurch behind Britannia Pacific number 70017 Arrow. Once the Express has thundered through, the manor continues its shunting. This route is still open today but Whitchurch, in 1964, still a junction for two other lines, has lost all its former importance as a railway centre. On the 30th of April, 1964, Tim Shuttleworth filmed some of the traffic on the Shrewsbury to Crewe line. At Combermere, just north of Whitchurch, a Liverpool to Cardiff Express, hauled by Black 544683, heads towards Whitchurch. Eight F four eight three nine eight trundles northwards with just a great western designed towed brake van. Back at Whitchurch, an Ivert Mogul shunts the stock of its train from Oswestry, which terminated here. Moving south, we come to Shrewsbury, which was always sure to offer a good mixture of former Great Western and LMS motive power. On the 15th of August 1963, 8F number 84418 is followed by modified Hall Class 460, number 6934, Beechamwell Hall, along the centre road between two of the platforms. Ivert Mogul 46512 arrives off the Cambrian section, hauling a former Great Western Railway inspection saloon. The loco was one of the final batch of the class which were built at Swindon in 1953. The special organised by the Fastiniog Railway for its annual general meeting often produced interesting motive power. In 1964, this train arrived at Shrewsbury behind Castle Class 460, number 4079, Pendennis Castle. The castle was not permitted to work over the former Cambrian lines, so it was replaced at Shrewsbury by a Great Western mogul and a manor. Here, the mogul and the manor back onto their train. Here, the double-headed combination storms out of Shrewsbury Pass Seven Bridge Junction signal box. This is the largest surviving traditional signal box still in use in Britain today.
Having disposed of its train, the castle was later recorded at Upton Magna, east of Shrewsbury, on the route to Wolverhampton. We will follow these tracks as well. A rather unusual special working arrives at Wellington Station. Number 6825 Flamfire Grange makes a steamy passage through the station with LMS Pacific 6229 Duchess of Hamilton in tow. The special was put in the loop at Hollingswood, east of Wellington, to allow a local passenger train through. The Pacific was on its way from Crewe to Minehead in Somerset, where it was to be preserved at a holiday camp. Many years later, the locomotive was taken out of retirement and restored to mainline running order. But this was very much in the future when these scenes were recorded on the 20th of April, 1964. Here the ensemble passes Oxley North Junction at Wolverhampton. There was to be no happy ending for the Grange, which along with the other 79 members of its class was scrapped. Also in April 1964, Tim Shuttleworth recorded another famous locomotive on its way to dignified retirement. A4 Pacific, number 60008, Dwight D. Eisenhower, which is hauled through Woodford Hulse on the old Great Central route, on its way from Doncaster to Southampton Docks. Later that day, the A4 passed through Banbury. It was on its way to a railway museum in the United States, where it still resides. The contrast between the beautifully restored A4 and the filthy train engine is most striking. This is All Brighton Station between Shrewsbury and Wolverhampton. A Stanyard tank 42609 propels a couple of brake vans through at speed. The final years of steam were marked by processions of steam engines making their last journeys to various scrapyards. One such melancholy cavalcade was recorded in April 1964. A castle-class loco is hauling two LMS Pacifics and a Jubilee 460 to the scrapyard at Great Bridge, which cut up a large number of steam engines during these depressing years. Here the gloomy cortege is shunted into the loop to give priority to a diesel multiple unit on a passenger working. It has not been possible to identify the Jubilee, but the Pacifics are numbers 46239 City of Chester and 46228 Duchess of Rutland. Once, these have been amongst some of the finest exponents of steam power in the country. Now, sadly, they were about to be reduced to scrap metal. That same month, another three of these magnificent machines, which dominated the haulage of the best trains on the West Coast Main Line for many years, 
pass Oxley North Junction on their way to meet their fate. It's a bright Saturday morning in February 1965. A pannier tank brings its Donington to Oxley sidings goods out of the loop at Cosford. The pannier is already shorn of its cabside number plate and its brass safety valve cover. Black 5 44841 hurries a special freight consisting of banana vans towards Wolverhampton. Sister Loco 45274 hauls a down fitted freight in the Shrewsbury direction. BR Standard Class 4 260 76031 scurries towards Wolverhampton, light engine. Roger Shenton had come to Cosford to record the procession of specials scheduled that day to bring supporters of Shrewsbury Town Football Club to London, where their club was playing Millwall in the fourth round of the FA Cup. The first of these, consisting of a rake of 13 coaches, is double headed by a pair of black fives. The next train, also consisting of a 13-coach set, produces a standard Class 4 mogul running tender first, piloting another Black 5. The final special was hauled by a Type 4 diesel. For the record, Shrewsbury Town beat Millwall 2-1, but lost in the next round to Leeds United. The Great Western had its own station at Wolverhampton on what had been the railway's through route from Paddington to Birkenhead. Our reminders of this now closed station recall occasions on which it was visited by special trains hauled by now preserved Great Western locomotives. One of the most famous of these was the 440 City of Truro, reputedly the first British steam locomotive ever to reach 100 miles per hour. It is seen here heading north out of Wolverhampton low level. This locomotive was restored to running order in the late 1950s by British Railways. In 1965, two privately preserved Great Western tanks hauled a special from the station. These were 262 number 4555 and 042 number 1450. The GWR line from Wolverhampton to Birmingham lost its through trains to London when the London Midland route was electrified. Later the section from Birmingham Snow Hill Station to Wolverhampton Low Level was closed entirely, though plans exist for a light rail system which will use much of the former track bed. The two locomotives steam off in the direction of Birmingham.
We conclude this program with some final memories of the steam hauled goods train. 8F number 48250 passes Norton Junction with a long coal train bound for Walsall in June 1957. Note the range and variety of the four-wheel wagons. Black 5, number 45015, moves away from a signal check at Ford Houses in March 1961. The movement of coal had been at the heart of the railway's freight business. Today, much of the heavy industry in the Midlands, which depended on coal, has been closed down, as have most of the coal mines. Other traffic flows have been lost to the overcrowded roads. Even the railways cannot be bothered to use the railway. It is not that uncommon these days to see a railway vehicle on the way to the works for repair on the back of a lorry. There can be no denying that the railways of the Midlands have changed radically since these films were taken. Whether this change has been for better or worse is for you to decide.